Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Montpelier Development Review Board for tonight, uh, June 17th. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as chair of the board. The other members from my right are, starting with Michael. Uh, Michael Zorchak. Rob Goodwin. Kevin O'Connell. Meredith Crandall, staff. Kate McCarthy. Ryan Kane. Okay, first order of business is approval of the agenda. Does anybody have any additions to the agenda? Hearing none, does anybody have a motion to approve the agenda as printed? So moved. Motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ryan. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda. Comments from the chair? Uh, none for this evening. Um, we actually, uh, is there a reason why the minutes are put down at the bottom? As a no idea, okay. but it's, I, I think it has to do with the new formatting on the civic okay. setup. Okay, that's fine. So you can you do it however, if you want to bump, bump it around, you can, but. Why don't we, why don't we approve the minutes? Because I am a creature of habit. <laughs> um, I, would, I would agree with that. I think it makes more sense to have it at the beginning. So the first, the first minutes, and, and given that we have a, a quorum on all of them, would be the May 6th minutes. Those that were there in attendance were myself, Kevin, Kate, uh, and Ryan. Any uh, additions, changes to the May 6th minutes? Yes, Kate. Yes, I have uh, two changes. On page two, the third par paragraph from the bottom says, Eric Bigglestone, president of the Murray Hill Association, raised concern about the project contaminating the associations. And I think we mean Oops. association's water supply, so the addition of water supply to that sentence. Got it. Um, the second edit on page three under adjournment, I both made the motion to adjourn and seconded the motion, <laughs> which is unprecedented. So I think there might be an error. I don't recall who motioned to adjourn or second. I'll check it against the on recording. May 6th. Thank you. Yeah. I, bet my it notes. Kevin. I bet it was two people whose names began with K. Probably. Mm. So. We could give it to Tom as his last action <laughs> on the board. Um, Honorary. But I do remember that there was a motion and a second to adjourn. So yeah. right. I'll, I'll, I'll check that and so then fix it. Sub Thank you. Subject to that post adoption edit and the correction, and I agree entirely that water supply is the missing phrase there. Um, any other changes to the May 6 minutes? Do I have a motion to adopt the May 6 minutes as amended? by someone who was present at the meeting. So moved. Motion by Kevin, do I have a second? Second. Second by Kate. All those in favor and eligible to vote, please raise your right hand. We have minutes for May 6th. June 3rd minutes. Be myself, Kevin, Ryan, and Rob, and Michael are all eligible to vote for that. Uh, do Are there any additions or changes to the June 3rd minutes? Hearing none, I will take a motion to adopt the June 3rd minutes. I'll move adoption of the June 3rd minutes as drafted. Very good. Motion by Ryan. Second, Second that. Second by Rob. All those in favor and eligible to vote for the June 3rd minutes, please raise your right hand. We have fully adopted minutes and clean, clean that off of our agenda. That brings us, of course, to 301 River Street. Thank you, gentlemen, for waiting. Um, so this is a continuation of the hearing from two weeks ago where we were addressing the final hearing, final plan review for two lot subdivision. But if you'll state your names for the record. Brian uh, Ammons. Make sure you've got the microphone pointed at whoever's talking just because it's Brian Ammons. Jason Merrill. And Don Marsh. Okay. And uh, Brian and Jason, you were under oath last time. You were, understand you remain under oath? Yes. Don, if you want to put your right hand up, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Right. Chair, I don't think Jason was here at the last. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Were you not here? I was here at the original. For the sketch. Oh, he was plan. for the sketch. Well, then let's oh, put sketch. The, yeah, I'm sorry. I was thinking you were here for the, the uh, two weeks ago. You Elliot were. Elliot was here. Okay. okay. Yeah. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under a pain's penalty of perjury? Yes. Okay. Thank you for that catch. You're very welcome. And 
Kate, I believe you had. Yes, um, I, I want to note um, that I was not here for the June 3rd meeting, but in preparation for this meeting, I've reviewed meeting minutes as well as the staff memo. On that day, I was also present at the sketch plan hearing, so I feel that I've um, come up to speed and can participate in this hearing as an informed person. Any objection? No objection. No. Good. All right. Um, hold on. Uh, and then wanna... I want to just pass these out. Okay. That way they have them as well. Um, so just one other addition is that Department of Public Works has provided some further input. Um, and so I want to pass that around that way. So this is, is this the main, one? Yep, this is the key bit in oh, yellow okay. about the suggested condition because they have still have access issues with the access. <clears throat> Here. So I have highlighted or surrounded in yellow the key recommendation from Department of Public Works about the access issues that were the key sticking point during the last hearing. Mm -hmm. um, and then if anybody wants after the applicant's updated presentation, I can summarize in brief as needed for the public record. So um, if I'm understanding correctly, just reviewing this and that Tom McArdle's recommendation is that there be an approval of the uh, or that he has no objection to the proposed driveway spacing, but there should be a traffic assessment performed if the land use anticipates traffic generation of 50 or more trips to lot number two during a peak hour? Right. If, if whatever proposal ends up coming down the line for a zoning permit um, generates traffic of 50 or more trips during the peak hours, he wants a full traffic assessment. Um, that you know, because the spacing does not comply with mm -hmm. the requirements, um, if you hit that trigger point for use of the new parcel, um, then you're going to run. You could run into issues. Okay. All right. Well, that's a little bit of a car before the horse. Sorry, but I wanted to clarify that. Uh, Don, did you want to make a presentation on? answering some of the questions? Well, I, I can respond to Tom's memo. Okay. Um, we don't disagree other than normally it would be 70 or 75 peak hour trips that would trigger a traffic study. Uh, I've never seen a 50 number, so that seems a little low. But we do agree that um, depending on what the proposed uses are on lot two, that a, a traffic study uh, may be warranted at that um, at that point, and I realize Meredith noted that traffic studies typically are in the subdivision stage as opposed to the site plan stage. I think we would ask that in this case, you condition that this traffic study would be warranted on the site plan if if it we think if it triggers. Uh, if it's like if the proposed uses are likely to generate more than 75 peak hour trips and that way we know what what really happens there because it could end up being a very light use or it could be a very intense use and then a traffic study would be warranted for sure right as I understand from last meeting the proposal here is just in a, a potential uh, absolutely this is just to sort of show that there can be some uses there, mm -hmm. but uh, in some respects, we might have been better off just not showing anything. Right. But on the other hand, we did want to show that there, the board that we think that there's a reasonable potential that the site can be developed. There is some ledge there; it'll take some blasting, um, but we th we're comfortable that it can be developed. The intensity of the development is subject to um, future, future, you know consideration right mm -hmm. and then having um, having the traffic study pushed off to the actual development then would keep the um, traffic study only triggered if if in fact it started to look like this as opposed to if it gets sold and put a single-family house or exactly. something later 
or very minimal commercial use. Meredith, did Tom give an indication as to why he picked the 50 uh, peak hour trigger? Um, so I think that part of it was also, if you read through here, that the potential uncertainty for whether or not the use on lot one could grow at mm -hmm. some point, and that if the new lot two use were to reach the 50 to make sure that there's a reevaluation of the then current lot one and lot two uses. Um, I believe he throws that in here. That should the land use on lot one be revised to a higher impact development, the combined effect should be included in the assessment of the traffic for lot two. Right. Although, I, I mean, I understand that, but I guess I'm, I'm just wondering if... Uh, well, the, <coughs> the, so, uh, we're going to have 3-90 in Montpelier Unified Development Zones, Section 3504.B. 50 or more new trips during the a.m. or p.m. peak hours on Class 2 and 3 roads. This is under the traffic impact study. So that could be where I got the number. I'm sorry, what section were you in? Uh, 3504.2, oh. and that's on page 3-90, traffic impact study. Yeah, so that's on class two and three roads. This yeah. is a class one. I understand, but maybe that's... Yeah, maybe, um, maybe that's why he went to... It sounds like it could be a lower use. So it's yeah, under the... Number, picking the... Picking the floor, not the ceiling. Mm -hmm. It's the same under the conditional use standards, which I just had, which is... 75 or more on class one mm -hmm. or 50 or more on class two or three mm -hmm. and I imagine that the thinking was that I think that if it's if you're on a class one road and you actually meet the dis, the spacing standards then it's 75 but here since you don't meet the spacing standards you know the likely potential impacts are more similar to a uh, a, a lesser highway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, Tom couldn't be here this evening, so. Um, right. I don't. I don't have that reasoning for him. Well, I just. I. I wondered. You know, and it, it's fine for us to to get into, but I. Um, I, I wondered if he had articulated some some not, particular reason. Now, not we, to me. We I, may choose <laughs> to adopt for those reasons that you guys have both articulated, which is. Um, that this is because of the proximity, um, it may require that. Although, you know, Meredith, you're indicating that, you know, part of this might be uh, a, when development happens on lot two, a, a, an assessment as to whether the impacts have increased on lot one or whether they're consistent mm -hmm. with that. And I don't want to make this overly complicated but I, I wonder if that isn't the better trigger for any type of traffic change in the traffic study numbers, which is, as it stands today, I understand Tom's comfortable with the way the traffic is likely to work, um, except that if the traffic increases on lot one or the use is such that it's a higher, higher intensity use. Mm, so I, yeah. I, no. I read the memo differently. Okay. I mean, yeah. to, to say that that it says the public works director is comfortable with it, I think, is is not quite what is stated. It says, in his opinion, the probability of turning movement conflict is relatively low because of the lot one traffic volume, lot one being the existing lot. Nonetheless, the driving driveway spacing is not in accordance with the guidelines, and appropriate conditions should be applied if approved. And, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I guess I, I would not go so far as to read that as the as comfort yeah. with the proposal. And there are the summary doesn't include it, but there are two long paragraphs here about the importance of driveway spacing, traffic conflicts, turn movements, time for motorists to make a decision, misinterpretation of blinkers when driveways are very close together. Yeah, I think he's so comfortable. Kind of taken together. I think he's comfortable with the approval provided that there is a traffic assessment mm -hmm. and should at the time of the traffic assessment, you know, traffic assessment at the next stage of zoning permitting. Right. And at that point, should lot one have changed, increased its, um, you know, higher impact of development at that point that you have to then incorporate traffic assessment of that lot as well as lot two. 
when you do the assessment is my reading of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sort of part of the same system, mm -hmm. part yeah. of that system, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, Don, anything, any further testimony? Um, just that we prefer the 75 trigger as opposed to 50. Okay. But I, we don't otherwise disagree with them. Board have any other questions on this? Um, you know, the memorandum that's been prepared seems to answer the questions that we had left over uh, by and large. Um, as far as this, this driveway, I think the testimony from last time around was that there really isn't another good driveway access point that would allow the, the distance between the two driveways to increase because of the topography. Um, and that that's your understanding as well, Don? Yes. I mean, there's a significant amount of ledge to the um, north of the proposed driveway between the two. Um, and, and I think there was some discussion about combining the two. And frankly, I, I would rather have the second one that, Throughout River Street, Berlin Street, there's lots of driveways that are closer than 200 feet and closer than 100 feet that work fine. But also the site distance diminishes as you go to the north. Um, not so much horizontally, but there's a, a little knoll just well before you, you get to the, uh, the rotary. So um, moving on to any further north, either driveway would, would diminish the site site distance um, from that direction and I so I wouldn't want to I'd not I'd like not to combine the two on lot one for sure and I think and the topography is such that, that as we go south uh, toward more of the Barry Montpelier Road the topography gets uh, too difficult to build a to build the access mm -hmm. so it makes sense to keep it where we are Okay. Is it safe to assume that the pre-existing driveways down, this is maybe a question for the board, but that the pre-existing driveways down 302 that may be closer together than the requirement would be grandfathered or maybe approved under previous, yeah. So Correct. typically we can't take what exists as evidence of an exception to the rule being acceptable. We like to. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I appreciate and understand your question, <laughs> your request. But I, I also take Don's point as um, just simply being that this is not an area where there has been, where there are issues with the traffic, that they're existing these with narrow driveways and it has not caused mm. a failure to that, that particular stretch of road. Um, it doesn't necessarily mm. excuse the, the condition. Um, I think I have a different experience of that okay. road and of what happens. I, it, you know, the, I understand that the engineering can allow for the the grade between the road and the driveway to meet this, the standard we're asking for. But as, as far as, you know, there's what can be engineered on the site and then the impact of the access point on the roadway function overall. And I think the more, the more access points, the more left-hand turns, the more turning movements, if those just keep happening down that road. It really degrades the road's function, I think, over time. Um, and it, it leaves me concerned about safety well, and, and roadway function. Just to put in something here, and the reason why the traffic impact study really needs to be done at the next phase when we know what's going in here, is that depending on what happens on lot two, you're looking at potentially brand new trips mm -hmm. um, right. and new traffic coming to the road mm -hmm. versus something like when the Sentinel Auto Parts store moved, you're just moving a little bit where they're going potentially versus bringing completely new people to that road at new times of day. So just a reason to have that traffic impact study later when we know what's happening. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? So the question is, do we want to deliberate? Or do we uh, want to simply take a vote in, about the condition? Well, and his and you, 
you know, we you need to make that determination about the where that driveway access is and also make sure you're clear about compatibility mm -hmm. with the character of the neighborhood. Just to be clear that those two things need to be dealt with yep. from the staff report. We had talked about the, the mm -hmm. character of the I, neighborhood. But there was no right. vote on those things. Right. That's all I'm saying is that make sure that those things are clearly um, decided on the record. And maybe just for the record, just to be clear, we've added the uh, B-71 driveway detail that Tom referenced so that that's on the record and agree to construct the uh, the driveway accordingly. And that's a change from the original site plan. And Tom was quite happy with that. <laughs> we want Tom to be happy. <laughs> and the only, the only thing I would say, to Kate, to what you brought up, and I, I don't disagree with it, but it's sort of always a balance of um, developing commercial land. Mm -hmm. And whenever you do that, I mean, that's presumably good for the city. Um, but it all it, it does create more driveways and and more driveways do create issues so yeah but it that's is, the balance it is that balance it's sort of the not no never but yes if conversation about and and what should that yes if look like and um, the policy priority of shared driveways that's in the zoning um, made an impact on my thinking though I have also heard your testimony that the shared driveway is not well, what you want well, I think it's not just what they want. I think it's, I mean, the testimony last time was that it's not practical. There's like a, a ledge and a very steep thing between the access for lot one and the proposed access for lot two. I totally agree with you. And I think if there was even any reasonable feasibility to a shared access that we'd want to see that pursued more. I would anyway, as one board member, want to see that pursued a little bit more in depth. But, you know, I think just looking at the topography and the discussion we had last time about this ledge kind of right there between the two accesses um, it, you know it seems like this is a pretty clear situation where there's really no other good access for anything on this site um, yeah. so I, I would note that another part of our charge is, as I understand it is to create lots that are suitable for development and if lots are not suitable for development we would not approve their creation and there may be some lots that are indeed in a commercial area and could bring revenue to the city and could provide opportunity for business development that may yet not be the right place to do it and that's kind of a more unpleasant part of the subdivision evaluation is what what is right to create space for these things mr. chair I would be uh, one member who would be in favor of uh, closing the hearing and going into deliberative session. I think well, there's there's enough uh, fine points involved with this application that I want to make sure we have all the T's crossed and I's dotted. You want to do it right. That's a, I'll, uh, I'll accept that as a motion from Kevin to close the, the hearing and to move into deliberative session with this application. Do I have a second? Are you all set with the other item that Meredith brought up? The item? I wish yeah. it did. Is this compatible with the character of the neighborhood? I'm satisfied with that. I, there was something okay. we raised last time about the the, sur the actual survey not having some of the. Uh, I think in your in your memo, Don, you said uh, uh, site plan is not a bearing a distance of property because it's not a boundary survey. Boundary survey provided by Richard Bell has all the required data, but I don't think it does. Yeah, so our, our comment wasn't directed at your site plan at all. It was just a comment on Richard Bell's survey. Well, then just a I, friendly I, amendment. To, I think it was an oversight on his part, but. I misunderstood that. That's something that could be as long yeah, as it's fixed yeah, just, on the I final guess. plat, right? It's right here. Right here. They're the distances, but not the bearing. Oh, I, I mean, the, the survey should have bearings and distances. Mm -hmm. So as, as long as that's fixed yeah, on the we'll final plat, right, it. Rob? Yeah, I just want to make sure we flag yeah, that for yeah. you that that's, got, it's not that it's not resolved. No, it's fine. Uh, um, yeah, but I just want because it's yep. Yeah. You remember? I think you obviously didn't notice Don that his didn't have it. You were obviously concerned just with yours, but I didn't want to flag it that. It doesn't have it in, in the final oh, one. We need those. Yeah. It'll just need right. to be on the final plat that 
that would come we'll to my office, assuming that this is all approved. Yep. I guess one other question. So, for the, as far as the site plan goes, it's really just the exact location of the driveway that we're approving. All the grading and everything else that has that nothing to do here. Mm -hmm. So, should the driveway be shown on the plat because that's the subdivision and we're approving the access in a specific spot? Um. No, I, I don't think it does because while we're approving the subdivision, technically we're not approving the building of this driveway. I mean, it's what it's showing is is that it's a fully compliant driveway, but I mean, all of this driveway access up here is just hypothetical. So I don't think it has to at the end of the day. Um, obviously, if something changes along the way, they would be free to amend their driveway if, right. you know, there's some engineering breakthrough that would allow a different location for a driveway. <clears throat> or if the next parcel over got developed and put in a road, they could play yep. off of that. So the, the subdivision, the, the process with the whole driveway here is just to sh proof for the permit decision, the DRB's decision, that the lot is developable, right. that there is a driveway that would be access acceptable under the regulations. I mean, that, that said, it is the likely one, which is why we're taking this amount of time to to show and, and to require that if there if it is developed and it is built, it's going to have to do these things, uh, uh, traffic studies. So, okay, uh, so there's a motion. Do I have a second? Second. The motion. Second motion to close the evidence and move into deliberative session. Any further discussion? Uh, I'll, I'll simply add, I, I feel like we had enough uh, character of the neighborhood testimony last time that we we took a little time, Don, after okay. after the issue about the access came up to sort of uh, plumb the depths of neighborhood characterization. And uh, okay. thank you. So I think we're, we're good, unless you had anything else that you wish to no. submit to that. Um, okay, well, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. All right, we'll take this into deliberative session and you will have a decision forthwith from it. So Thank just you. so you know, there's we'll, we'll wait till after tonight's, at, at the end of tonight's meeting to move into that deliberative session. Um, and then uh, normally a written decision comes out of that process after a week or so. Um, and that's when you'd receive our decision. Um, so just a little note that we may have to have a little discussion about our process and whether there may be allowed to be an oral uh, presentation of maybe some of the decision to them just because of my yeah. schedule. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that. We'll I just discuss wanted that to make then. sure that they were. I'll, I'll keep you guys updated yeah. on schedule okay. discussions. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, the next application is 81 North Street. Eric, is it Eric? Eric, yeah. Eric Stoffer? Great. So this is sketch plan, and I presume uh, you're here for this sketch plan as well, the people in back. Um, so the way in which this works very different than the last application. No one gets put under oath. Um, this is really just a preliminary hearing. No decisions are going to be made tonight. Uh, no votes will be taken. It's just simply an opportunity for us to review your proposed application, give you feedback on what we see are some of the issues or things that we don't see that we may need to see in a final subdivision. Um, if any of the interested parties that are here or that parties that wish to become interested parties uh, have an opportunity to ask some questions and feedback, knowing that this is only a preliminary sketch review um, that is really just about sort of fleshing, fleshing out some of the issues. So with that, Mr. Stauffer, um, please let us uh, give us an overview of what you're proposing. So I purchased uh, 81 North. Just make sure you've got the microphone close. Sorry. I purchased 81 North Street, uh, I think it was towards the beginning of this year. And I've been renovating the house that's there. It sits on a almost four tenths of an acre, uh, part of which is flat. And part of my decision making in buying and renovating the house was to subdivide off the lot uh, to sell that sat behind the house. Um. OK. 
Okay, and so if I'm looking at your plan attachment, it looks like a modified tax map. You're proposing to keep lot one as where the house is. Correct. And then up Ewing Street, approximately 60 feet, create the second lot. And would this second lot, the, the sloped area behind, would be mostly on that second lot? The slope mostly on that second lot, correct. Okay. Yep. And is that, that's greater than 30%? I actually don't know the answer to that. I think that it is. Okay. At the very bottom, the toe of the slope may not be. Uh, but as you rise up that, that does become a significant hillside. Did you bring a copy of the staff? Mm -hmm. And do you have any plan? What, I mean, what is your plan for this second lot? Is it just to sell it as raw land for somebody to develop, or are you looking to develop it yourself? Uh, my plan, I think, is to sell it. Um, I'm going to try and sell them both together. Uh, I would like somebody to, that wants them both to uh, to take it and keep it like it is, but if not, it would be to sell it off as a separate lot. I don't have plans to develop it myself at this point. And one of the things that I'm going through, and you'll see in the staff report, um, so there's a couple of issues. One is, um, you know, you'll see in the staff report and the question about the 30% slope. So the way the Montpelier bylaws work is there's a, anything with a, that's being built on a 30% slope greater needs engineering. Uh, and that's just an engineer to testify that this is a stable, uh, slope, there's a series of criteria within the zoning bylaws that, yep. that address that. But if you're not building within that 30% slope, it obviously isn't triggered. And yep. so we'll need clarification as to one way or the other. If it is 30%, you'll need essentially an engineer to, to be able to opine yep. that it's possible to build. Sure. Understood. I think there is room to build a, a place that's not on the sloped area. Mm -hmm. um, but if somebody, whoever purchased it, <laughs> would like to move that house back onto it, then, right. then that would be at that point. And, you know, there's some other sort of technical features, one of which is you're going to have to show the setbacks for the, for the lot and um, the impervious cover and buildable area in the final application. Just clarify, you have to show on your map how the setbacks for for the entire lot and okay. just you you understand that the there, there's a certain area between your boundary and where you can actually build that there is a sort of a no man zone uh, understood i think the dashed area on this uh small plan here it's got a page number that shows uh, maybe the setbacks aren't called out but those are yeah. approximate setbacks well, and I think you're going to want the, the setbacks for lot one and lot two. And, and what's interesting is that I, I don't think that's the right rear setback for that. I mean, this is your approximate buildable area. But, I mean, your actual setback, technical setback, is, is the boundary line. Way back up the hill. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, you know, in some ways it's a little bit mis misleading by having that there. It's just something I think that's correct, sure. to, worth correcting so that you can be clear. Um, and then... You know, as you saw from the last time, one of the other issues is a driveway. Yeah. Um, that you're going to have to show where and to show that it's far enough from other other driveways that it's not going to create some of the issues that we yeah. we saw below. And this is probably a class two um, a city. It's a city street as opposed to a highway. Um, so, you know, there's certain there's different requirements for that um, as far as the distance between the two. Any other questions from the board so far? I'm just sort of marching through, um, but feel free to interject. And a shared driveway is also a possibility. If, yep. Yep. If desired. Yep. Yeah, and that that would be helpful to know because I think the driveway for lot one is behind the house. Is that the drive is is off of Ewing Street, correct? Yeah. yeah. It's currently up right. I mean, the Kate, Kate's point's a really good one in that there are allowances for shared driveways, yeah. and there may be some logic to that, but we'd want the subdivision application to show that. that, that Understood. Um, I think the key is to be able to show one, at least one, 
possible driveway that complies with the regulations, if at all possible. Yeah. And that's sure. you know that's what we're looking for. And you and I can, once you have a survey done, so that we can see yeah. where your slopes are, exactly where your boundaries yeah. are, we'll be able to meet and discuss that. Okay. Yeah. And. Yeah, the, the driveway and the access and the parking um, are going to be critical. Um, understanding that you've, what you've done, I think, is the f right first step, which is to show the sort of buildable lot area, uh, although it would certainly be helpful to understand the dimensions of that. Um, I, mean, I think there's a rough measurement, um, but to understand how, how much of a building <coughs> lot. And then you know what, what you're essentially building towards is a, something that would look like a plan, a potential plan, so that we can, because our real main charge is to make sure that when we cre if we grant this permit to create a second lot, that it doesn't create an inconsistent lot or a lot that was would not be developable um, and have the essential setbacks, uh, parking access, and other amenities that are just expected. And I think I, w I would note something that I think is new in this version of the zoning. On page 7 of the staff report, it says the board may waive some off-street parking requirements if, among other options, there's an existing transit stop within a quarter mile of the proposed development. Um, I don't know if the stop at, down at the lane shops is within a quarter mile, but there is a transit stop. So yeah. depending on how your design and your preference for what you, what you wish to provide, yeah. there are options. Um, moving along, I mean, there's uh, the public utilities, um, which has become an, an issue um, that we've had to deal with because the zoning bylaws require underground utilities where possible. Okay. Um, and so it would be important to understand where the utilities for this particular lot would come from. Um, yeah. You know, the, the reality is that most of the infill do, doesn't have existing sort of underground utilities readily available. And the question becomes, is it possible? You know, if the poles are across the street, we've heard testimony on other applications that the, it's cost prohibitive in a, in a very substantial way. Um, but if there's power lines there and it's possible to run said utilities from that same side of the street underground, um, the bylaws do require that. Um. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a utility pole pictured uh, on the right. corner of the proposed lot, too. I don't know if that's just for uh, just for communication lines or if that's the power line as well. But. Or is that across the street? Is that well, there's, there's one on the far end. If you look on page 10, yeah. you can see the one in the background. Yeah. That looks like that's right on the corner, potentially, of lot 2. Okay. But, yeah, I don't know how old. I mean, we've had the situation before where if a pole is too old, they won't run underground. Yeah. So it's but an I mean, evaluation with the utility company. That's just something you should figure out. Sure. Be prepared to, you know, if it's possible to run the utilities underground from the pole to the yep. next willing, we're going to require that. So if it's not, then just be ready to explain why, and yep. we can take it up then. Mm -hmm. The next staff comment that's, um, you know, talks talks about the the idea of a la landscaping plan. In the past, what we've required applicants in this type of infill is just to explain what the current landscaping is, what the proposed landscaping would look like, which is, is this going to have to be clear cut? Or is this going to, are you going to be able to preserve most of the, the forestation uh, that exists on the lot? Um, or would there be a requirement? I mean, it's, it's a unique situation that you're proposing to either do one of two things, is sell lots one and two as a package, right. or sell two and keep one, um, as I understood was a possibility. Sell them both together or sell them independently. I'm right. not, not going to hang on to either of them personally. Uh, but in, in either case, I think what we want, and this is the point at which, you know, once they're, once they're separated, it would be difficult for a lot one to require a lot two to plant, put in a landscaping okay. to prevent, to, to, sh sure. to screen. And, and the purpose of landscaping really, and especially in, in smaller lots like this, is to screen to make sure that, you know, the guy standing in his kitchen isn't looking at the, you know, bedroom across yeah. the way. Um, 
and and to provide some some bit of, of break between these buildings and so we'd want to see at least some sense of this is forested here or you know when it's developed i would want a landscape here of shrubs and trees or or some type of uh, buffer of that nature and that's what we'd want to see in in this plan it doesn't have to be listed down to the plant you know five maples and six lilacs kind of thing but i it has to have an overall landscaping plan so that we have a sense about how how much and in, how invasive is this development likely to be and as far as cutting things away and then what it would look like after um, and what would be proposed um, yeah, obviously the um, the final draft is going to have to have all the survey yep. marks and, and such I don't know if you've retained a surveyor to do no. this or will retain a will. surveyor yeah. Uh, and there, they can make sure that all the monumentation and, and permanent rights of way and, and distances are marked out. Yeah. Um, and then was there any, uh, you know, part of this is a question about the character of the neighborhood. Um, are you proposing this to be developed as a single family house? I would think so, just based on the size of the lot and its location and what else is going on. Um, the single family right next door, obviously, just uphill is a, I don't know if it's apartments or condos, but a three or four unit place there. Um, but I would think a single family home just based on the size and scale of what's going on there is what I would see. Um, what I would recommend is just looking at the character of the neighborhood description this is in um, and this is in the bylaws but this this is the what's called the Franklin Street Northeast neighborhood yeah. and in the beginning of the bylaws each each little neighborhood has a narrative description yeah. so when you come back having a brief even if it's it's just written into your application as a supplemental piece of explaining why that fits into the character of the neighborhood I mean it sounds like it's consistent yeah. With the, and I'm, I think we're all familiar with this this neighborhood of it's a fairly residential. Um, are you in the Franklin? Yeah. So I mean, it um, showing that that would be consistent and describing that. I don't think that would be a hard hurdle. N none of these seem like hard hurdles. No. I'm just they're just little details yeah, that we need no. to see. Um, and I think that's largely in the staff report. Did anybody have any other questions that went beyond? Okay. Um, so I don't know. Do any of the open it up to any of the uh, interested parties or people that might be interested parties? That and you're feel free if you're just here to monitor. And, um, we're not necessarily inviting feedback or asking, but it is your opportunity if you have some concern. And if, if you do have anything to say, just come up to the microphone so we can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm just here to monitor. Uh, I, I'm in the adjoining, uh, I own the apartment building oh, next to that. Oh, it's the apartment, too. It is. Uh, so I, I just was curious as to what your plans were, and it sounds as if you don't really have plans other than to subdivide it and yeah. offer it up yep. to somebody who may. Um, so that that's why I'm here. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So... Okay, and you know, I, I think this is an important process, and part of the reason why we have this preliminary is oftentimes, you know, so neighbors can understand or interested parties can understand what's going on, and if they do have questions or if there's something site specific, a concern that they can articulate it to you, and and oftentimes that gives you an opportunity before the final to work out any particular issue. Sure. Um, good. Anything else? I mean, I think that is something worth, you know, uh, landscaping not just between the existing building and the new lot, but creating a new lot with a new building there, you know, just landscaping everywhere around, so including between the proposed lot two and the adjoining apartment building. So we always encourage neighbors to, like, talk about it beforehand, and, you know, usually there's it's not contentious, but mm -hmm. that is a possible another possible area where some landscaping might be required or a plan would be helpful I think I think that's a valid point especially if there's a building that's located I don't know where the buildings how close they are to the boundaries yeah. or not if there's one that's particularly close and 
we probably want to include <laughs> some type sure. of, of uh, screening. Good. Anything else? Blue paint. The blue paint looks good. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, the house looks great. Yep. Thank you. Well, that's right. You, you're both passed by on day. <laughs> twice a day. I've been admiring that house for a long <laughs> you time. You see the inside. Would love to. I, yeah. Well, it's... After your application uh, is complete. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay. Well, then, if you have any questions, uh, Meredith is available. Can help walk you through great. some of these concerns. Um, you have the staff report. That'll help guide you. I mean, nothing that we've talked about really is outside of what the staff report yeah. and the concerns that they raised. You know, I see this as a pretty straightforward, and like any subdivision, it's really a question of whether you meet the, the various technical requirements and can yeah. show, you know, setbacks and, and uh, driveway distances. Good. Any questions for us? No. Good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other business? I will note that our next regularly scheduled meeting is July 8th, 2019, 7 p.m. Yeah. here, and that is a Monday uh, following the 4th of July weekend. And just a little FYI, as of right now, assuming nobody drops out, we have five applications for the, fifth, for the, for the next, sorry, five applications for the 8th. It's going to be a full schedule. So get here early and eat dinner before. Yeah. And if possible, pick up your packets or at least review them online over the weekend. Um, what we'll have to think about, and we'll just uh, we'll take a hour. What kind of applications are, are these? Um, the f first, I think it's the very first one on the agenda, is going to be the 106 East State Street subdivision final. So, Gary Shai. Yeah, the Gary Shai one. Um, there's one other sketch plan. There's a fairly, should be fairly straightforward um, home business conditional use, mm -hmm. and then a couple of waivers. Um, okay. One of them, can't remember what the second one is, one is pretty simple, it's about a front like stoop, covered stoop. Well, we'll just, I think we'll have to keep, keep an eye, you know, just see how the flow of the evening goes, mm -hmm. um, and knowing that we may have to continue some. Yep. Um, and so as long as the applicants sort of towards the tail end know that's a possibility. Yep. No, that's, um, it's going to be, I, it wasn't, you know, I was out last Friday and came back in and Monday went out. Yeah. Two more came in. <laughs> yeah. No, that's perfectly so fine. I mean, we can. It's, it's, it is one where I'm going to have to contact people to let them know that Good. it's a heavy load. Good. And have the uh, applications for the uh, open seats gone out or is that? Uh, so been there, it's been posted, but as far as I know, we have no applications for the open DRB. Just, just one position. Right? And we now have no, two. 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 Deb and one? Tom. Oh, that's right. That's right. So certainly if anybody is knows of someone who might enjoy spending their Monday nights with us, now's the time to let them know. Where else would you rather be? Exactly. I <laughs> no way. Less than every other. Right. Unfortunately, it's not every Monday. It's every other Monday. Yes. Well, twice a month. month. Not even necessarily. That's true. Yeah. I don't know about you, but every other Monday, I come here again. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, don't let that throw you off for July. Okay. So let's uh, let's move into uh, deliberative session. I'll take a motion to do so. So moved. Motion by Kate. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kevin. All those in favor of moving into deliberate session to consider 301 River Street, raise your, raise your right hand. We are in deliberate session. <laughs>